Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. We welcome you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. May the good Lord bless you. We welcome every visitor. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you right from the auditorium. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping that now we're coming up, we can be an inspiration to everyone. And you'd do somebody a favor, you in the radio listening audience, if you'd call a friend, have them to tune in and get this hour. I feel we can be helpful, so you do that. Now you take your Bible today and turn to John chapter 3 for the reading of God's Word. It's page 1117 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Reading the other day about this man that went to the choir and he just couldn't carry the tune and throw everybody off and always mess the choir up. And some of the choir members said to the pastor, if we don't, if you don't get him out of the choir, we're going to leave the choir ourselves. About four of them came to the pastor and said, we're just going to leave the choir if you don't move him out. And the pastor said, I... I'll handle it. Just let me take care of it. So he went to the dear old gentleman. He said, sir, said, I have a promotion for you. I, I'm going to appoint you as head usher. I want you to remain in the auditorium as head usher. And I'd appreciate it very much. The man said, no, I, I'd rather sing in the choir. So I'll just go back to the choir. The preacher said, well, I got a level with this man, so I just might as well tell him. He said, sir, I might as well tell you, said there's four people in the choir, said there's going to leave if you didn't leave the choir. Well, I said, pastor, don't pay any attention to that. I heard 30 or 40 people say you couldn't preach, and I didn't say anything to you about it. So, <laughs> all right, for you out in the radio listening audience, the time is just about run out for uh, Holy Land Tour to get applications for the tour. Uh, this tour we planning to take in March, March the 22nd, is one of the most reasonably priced tours we've ever had. It's 11 days, and only cost around $1,200 for the plane ticket over there and back, for first class uh, hotel rooms to stay in, for the meals, and all of that for around $1,200. Now, that's like a rotten egg you can't very well beat that and so if you're interested in making the holy land tour if you concern about the price you'll never be able to top that it's one of the best we've ever offered to those who would like to go we'll be spending a couple of days over in uh, jordan in fact two nights in jordan and we're going to petra a beautiful Rose Rock City. You enter in on a mule, a horse, a walk-in. You can't drive in. And you go on the inside of this rock, and it's very beautiful. And when you get on the inside, you be, see many of uh, homes hewed out from the side of the rocks on the inside. Beautiful rose in color. People have lived there in years gone by. And you see much on the inside of the Rose Rock City, and I tell you that alone would be worth the trip. And you just to see that beautiful scene. That'll be, of course, about our first day after we arrive in Jordan. Then we go back to Jordan, spend the night, and then cross over uh, the river, the Jordan River, into Israel. The rest of the time will be in spending Israel, visiting the Garden Tomb, Mount Calvary riding on the Sea of Galilee, going to the Dead Sea, going down to Masada, where the Jews held out in about 73 A.D., committed suicide rather than be captured by the 10th Roman Legion. And wonderful, wonderful places. I know what some may be thinking. You said, well, preacher, how about that disturbance going on over there? Well, that'll be settled by March, I'm sure. Those Jews are not going to put up with that foolishness very long. And not only that, but that's not as bad as it looks on TV. The news media always blows those things up out of proportion. Everything that happens that looks bad about Israel or other things, politicians and whatnot, they'll blow it out of proportion. 
And it's not near as bad as they make it look on TV. I'm not worried about it. And God will take care of a group, I'm sure. And uh, they're not going to carry us any of the real dangers on. We're not going to the Gaza Strip anyway. And it's a wonderful trip. And um, this will probably be the last Sunday I'll mention it. And there may be some of you in the radio listening audience. Retirement age, you've never been anywhere. $1,200 is not bad for a wonderful tour like this. And you need to get in touch with me right away if you're uh, thinking about going. Maybe some of you here in the church, you could almost borrow that much money and go on it. Be well worth it, every penny of it, even had to pay the interest back on it. And it's a trip of a lifetime. And some of, some of you out in the radio listening audience just didn't go to your church today, but I'll tell you what you could do. You could get together and send your pastor, no greater thing could you do for him. Maybe send him and his wife. And if you're thinking about it, if you're on the borderline, if I can shove you over on my side, why, I want to do it, and you'll shake my hand when we get back and say, Preacher, I'm glad you twisted my arm a little bit because I wouldn't take anything in the world for this tour. And so I probably won't miss it anymore on Sunday, probably through the week either as far as that. And if you're interested now, you get in touch with me right away, and we'll work with you about the tour. Now, the book of, of John chapter 3, and this tape today will be tape number 315. Tape number 315. And if you'd like to have the tape, write in and request it. We'll send it to you for a gift of $3, and $3 is used to help pay for our radio time. And this past week, our radio support has been greatly off. And we have to look to God's people that love the Lord, that can see the need and value of this ministry, that's willing to see it continue on, that want to have a part in the work that's being done. We have to depend on those people to work with us in taking care of the radio expense. I pay my radio bill every Monday morning. I refuse to go in debt to the station. If I have a little over enough to pay, I'll save it over the next week. If I don't have enough and can't round it up, I have to pay it myself. And then uh, we, we try to pay the bill every year. And that's where it's been for almost 40 years. People have been laying up treasure in heaven in regard to the radio and ministry of the home mission work. My subject today would be, it was night when he came. It was night when he came. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now we find that this man that came by night was distracted to the truth, but he missed it here. He didn't add enough to it. He said, we know thou art a teacher come from God. If he said, now we know thou art God come to die on a cross, be buried and rise again and teach while you're here, he had it right. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I said unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the Bible tells us in verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that's born of the spirit is spirit, and so forth. I won't read the uh, entire chapter. You ought to read right down through verse 21. These are some of the greatest verses found in the Bible. And I'll be uh, expatiating upon them as we move down in the chapter talking about this man that came by night. The Bible said it was night when he came. This man was named Nicodemus. This man was a ruler of the Jews. This man was a member of the Sanhedrin court. This man was a Pharisee. He lived a life as clean as a hound's tooth. Very intelligent man. He wasn't a crackpot. And he was a member of the court. He couldn't have been a member of the court unless he was a man of wisdom in that respect. And so he came to Jesus by night. Slipped out at nightfall to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Son of God looked him in the face and told him that he must be born again. Now, he was a Pharisee that was really proud of his background. He's proud of the fact he was a member, or rather descendant of Abraham. 
Now those Pharisees had worked themselves up a great set of laws. They had 365 thou shalt not and 248 thou shalt and so forth. And so uh, they had plenty of laws. The Pharisees did. They didn't keep them all. They wanted other people to keep them. But they didn't keep many of them themselves. Kept some of them enough to get by. But Jesus said, now Nicodemus, I want to talk to you about something. Now this old man Nicodemus was a proud man. He was full of pride. And he said, I want you to know I'm a descendant of Abraham. I want you to know that. I want you to know I'm a member of the Sanhedrin court. I want you to know I'm a leader among the Jews, among the Pharisees. Boy, he was a proud man like the apostle Paul when God saved him. Jesus looked him straight in the face and said, Now listen, you've got to be born all over again or you'll never go to heaven. Now this man was so proud of his birth, he could tell you every day about his birth, how he was born, a descendant of Abraham. Well, he could talk about that every day. And Jesus knew he had to knock that prop out from under him before he could get him saved. And Jesus looked him in the face and said, Man, you must be born again. That birth you have in mind, that you're born out of that family, descendants of Abraham, that's not going to get you to heaven. Now, when Jesus told him he had to be born all over again in order to go to heaven, that floored him. Now, the new birth is mentioned 13 times in the Bible. And I want to use an illustration to show you how it has to be produced by the power of God. Now that is what it today is known as the mineral kingdom and what is known as the vegetable kingdom and what is known as the animal kingdom, what is known as the human kingdom and what is known as God's kingdom. Now it would take a miracle from God to transform something from the mineral kingdom into the vegetable kingdom. That would take the power of God. It would take the power of God to uh, transfer something from the, the uh, vegetable kingdom into the animal kingdom. It would take the power of God to transfer something from the animal kingdom into the human kingdom. It would take the power of God to transfer something from the human kingdom into God's kingdom. And that's exactly what happens whenever you're born again. You're born into God's kingdom. You become part of the spiritual kingdom of God. And only God Almighty can place you in that kingdom. If you've never been born again. You're on the outside. I don't care how religious you are. Now this man came by night. You may say preach Edwards. Why did he come by night? Well we might speculate. Somebody said he maybe he was a busy man. Well I'm sure of that. I'm sure he's a busy man. Some might say, well, he, he's just kind of ashamed being a, a religious, a leader. I guess with that because uh, he was a, a leader there in Israel and this man Jesus going around among the common class of people, he might have been a little ashamed to go and talk to Jesus. Somebody said, well, the reason that he went by night is because he feared the face of man. Now that's possible. That's possible. He feared the face of man. Somebody else said he went to Jesus by night because he had darkness within and darkness within corresponds with darkness without. Well, I guess, I believe, maybe that one reason he went. He, because he had that darkness within and darkness in corresponds with darkness without, he moved out at night. And when he moved out at night, he moved toward the light. He moved toward the light of the world. Now there's three things that God will give you whenever you come to know Him by a spiritual birth. You receive, of course, when you're born into the family of your parents, you receive a legal standing in that family. Many years ago, I was born into the Edwards family, and I received a legal standing in that family. And then He, he gives you a name. That is, when I was born in the Edwards family, they gave me a name. I have the Edwards name. And so whenever you're born into God's family, you have a name. And then you have a nature. When I was born into the Edwards family, I received the nature of my parents. 
Now, whenever you're born into God's family, you receive a new nature, the nature of God, the indwelling spirit of God, the imputed righteousness of God. God gives that to you. And so these things are applied to the family of God when you're born into God's family. So you see that being born into God's family is far more than walking down the aisle and shaking the preacher's hand. That's many of a person done that and died and went to hell. It's far more than being baptized in water or sprinkled or christened. There'll be multitudes in hell and already there now that's been baptized more than one time. They have been sprinkled, some have, they've been christened, but that's not the new birth. That's not what God does for a man. That's not the way it's done. And it's not by water baptism, it's not by taking the communion service, the Lord's Supper. There are some churches there, especially the Camelites, I think they have the Lord's Supper about every a Sunday. Then the Catholics, they have what they call the Mass. None of that's going to get them to heaven. They'll go straight to hell if that's all they got to depend on. Beloved, these things we find not to be the new birth. And it's not keeping the law. You can try to keep the law until you turn blue in the face, die and go straight to hell as a martin to his gourd. Now, I'm a country boy and I know what it means to see a martin flying toward a gourd hanging out in the yard. They go in that direction. They make a straight shot, bang, right into that gourd. Now, you can go as straight to hell as a martin to his gourd if you don't uh, get, let God do something for you in regard to birthing you into his family. So you have church members today by the multitudes. All oh, they have joined the church and they have reformed. They have joined them, uh, social uh, workers and societies and so forth and organizations doing a lot of good work out here millerating the slum areas and still die and go to hell. You have people working in hospitals and convalescent homes and various other places doing a lot of good work, helping the sick and even saying prayers and, and the things of that, reading prayer books and counting uh, beads and all that kind of stuff and playing with crosses and things of that type, dying going straight to hell as they can go because they have never been born again, many of them. Now these things that you're depending on, these fetishes many people have, in their automobiles and so superstitious until they saw a cat cross the road, they turn around and go back in the opposite direction. Those things being superstitious is not going to do the job. Now you can belong to these things, be part of them, and die and go to hell. You enjoy the moose, the goose, the gander, the turkey buzzards, and the Masonic Order, and uh, all of these organizations, the worldly organizations you got today, and still go to hell. These things are not going to get you to heaven. I'm going to knock every prop up money you I possibly can today that you're leaning on. And you'd be surprised at the props people are leaning on today that they think it's going to take them in when they die. A lot of people depend on keeping some golden rule. Somebody said, well, if I keep the golden rule, I'll go there. You'll go there, all right, but it won't be heaven. I was riding down the road with a man one day and he's bragging about, bragging about being a great leader in the Masonic Lodge. I said, well, what are you doing about going to heaven? He said, listen, listen, fella. He said, uh, if I keep all the rules that we have in our Masonic Lodge, and when I die, I'm going to the great lodge above. I said, man, there's not but just one thing wrong with that. It isn't so. I said, if you don't get saved, if you're not born again, you go to hell. I don't care if you kept all those rules. There's not a club. There's not an organization. There's not a lodge. There's not a church. There's not a field of education anywhere in the world that can get a man to heaven unless he's born again. The education won't do it. You would have all kinds of degrees and brag about your degrees, your, your uh, BA degrees, your RFD degrees and all the degrees in the world and still die and go to hell. Beloved, you got to realize that these degrees, DDs and all of them, is not going to get you. You have a string half as long as your fingers still die without God. You must remember that degrees don't get you to heaven. You have to be born of God's Spirit. It's always good sometimes to have 
a degree. I've had an honorary degree uh, there bestowed upon me, but that's kind of like a curl in a pig's tail. It don't do anything for the pork. And so I, the, the degree doesn't help me in getting me to heaven or uh, helping me preach. I appreciate the honor. I thank God for those that thought enough of what God has done through this unworthy servant. They wanted to do it. And I accepted it many years ago. But that DD is not going to do anything for me in the way of getting me to heaven. I was already prepared to go to heaven. God fixed me up before that came along. In fact, it doesn't help my preaching. It might help me in the way of prestige sometimes, someplace, somewhere. But it doesn't help me in my preaching. And you can have all kinds of degrees and still die without God and go to hell. Now this man came to Jesus by night and he lived a good, clean life. You couldn't find one thing in this man's life that you'd say, well, he's a dirty sinner. Because he lived a clean life. I, I mean... He was so clean until he, would, he could join any church today that he wanted to join. If you just walk down and say, I want to join, and whenever they judged him by his life. Now, good, good living is not going to good. Good morality won't do it. A reformation won't do it. You can reform and reform and reform and say, I'm going to do better. Quit cussing out loud, stop beating your wife, and still go to hell. Now, you must realize that God must do something for you. And when God does something for you to put you into his family, God doesn't start on the outside. God doesn't start knocking off things on the outside. No, sir. God starts on the inside and works from the inside out. And so reformation won't do it. Education won't do it. I believe in the right kind of education, good old sanctified education that's right and true and According to good laws and according to the book, I don't believe in a lot of this crazy stuff today you call evolution, trying to teach that man came from monkey. Now, some of those jaybirds that teach that, now, I don't know, they, they might have come from monkey. And I, I, I've had ancestors probably hang by the necks back yonder somewhere, but none by their tails. And these jaybirds that teach the theory of evolution is dumb as an ox. That's a dumb theory to teach. I don't care who teaches it. Now, now, if that was true, we'd still have monkeys turning into human beings. Why don't they turn into them today? Evolution is out of the pit of hell when it comes to people evolving from a tadpole to a monkey and then to a man. Well, that's silly. A man has to be stupid to believe that stuff. Oh, you say, preacher, I'll get mad at you. Help yourself. I don't care. God didn't call me to preach what people like. God called me to preach what they need and preach what this book tells us. And so you can say, well, um, I'll just evolve and get better and reform and do good and keep the rules and join this and join the other and all these different organizations. And man, I go sailing in. You go sailing in all right, but it'd be down with not up with. Now, Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, I want to talk to you a little bit. I, I have something I want to tell you. He came in there, man. Oh, it's talking to the Son of God and bragging on himself. And Jesus just knocked the props off Monday. First of all, he knocked out his pride. He's so proud of his birth. So Jesus said, now, Nicodemus, let me tell you something. you got to be born all over again. That, that earthly birth is not worth a dime in regards to getting you to heaven. You can brag on Abraham, Moses, David. That won't get you in, Nicodemus. You'll have to be born all over again. And that's true for every human being. I don't care how often you've reformed or how loud you pray or how much you give, how many churches you've joined. If you haven't been born again, you're a lost sinner. You may live a life so clean and so pure and so holy in the sight of man until they start looking for Feathers under your arms, taking you an angel, part of an angel. But beloved, listen to me. You're not saved that way. You don't go to heaven that way. A lot of people want to do something to be saved. And if they could give something, if they could just uh, work themselves up a good case of salvation, they'd like to do that. But that's not the new birth. Now, Jesus said, Nicodemus, you'll have to be born from above. 
Now there's only two births. Now he didn't say you'll have to be born again and go out here and drink a glass of beer and, and get lost again and have to be born again. He didn't say that. He said you have to be born again. You're born one time into your earthly family. You're born one time into God's family. When you became a child of your parents, you've always been a child of your parents. I was born in the Edwards family, and I became an Edwards, and I've always been a member of my family. My mother and daddy uh, brought me into this world. My mother birthed me into this world. I became part of that family. I couldn't be born the second time in that respect. Now, Nicodemus thought there might be a possibility. He said, now, he said, how can a man be an old? See, he is no old gray beard. How can a man be an old? He probably had white hair. How can a man be an old? How can he be born? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? See, our earthly is talking. He knew nothing about spiritual things. And he asked Jesus that question. said, now, can a man enter the second time? in his mother's womb and be born again. He is talking all together about earthly matters. Jesus said, now Nicodemus, listen to me. I'm not talking about another physical birth. That's impossible. You're only born one time in your earthly family. He said, Nicodemus, I'm talking about a spiritual birth, a birth from above. A birth by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. He said, whenever you repent and believe on Christ, the Word of God, the seed of God is placed in your heart. When you hear the Word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And then the Holy Ghost uh, quickens that seed of God, the Word of God, and makes you alive in Christ Jesus. You're quickened by the Spirit of God. And it's the Holy Spirit of God that gives birth to your soul through the Word of God. And all of that is from above. That must come from God's word. That must come from heaven. That cannot be produced by institutions down here. It must come from above. So I was born one time in the Edwards family. Later on, in another state, I was born into God's family. See, I had a birth from above. Born again by the Spirit of God and by the word of God. Nicodemus still couldn't understand it. And, and Jesus said, Now, Nicodemus, the wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, and you cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. He said, You can't any more understand the moving of the Spirit of God and see the moving of the Spirit of God than you can see the wind as it blows. You've never seen the wind. Oh, you say, Preach, I saw the wind blowing out there. No, you didn't see the wind blowing. You saw trash moving, debris moving around, but you didn't see the wind. And nobody sees the wind. And nobody sees the Spirit of God when He gives birth to your soul. He takes care of that on the inside of you through the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Bible said the Word is the seed of God. And you can't be saved apart from the seed of God. It must be planted in your heart and soul by the preaching of the word or the teaching of the word, the witness of the word, and you're quickened by the Spirit of God. It all happens from above, and when that happens, then you're saved. You're born again. That's what Jesus is telling Nicodemus. And he goes on down, he said, Now listen, Nicodemus, you remember the Old Testament story back there in the wilderness whenever Moses leading the church through the wilderness there, and, and uh, they begin to murmur and complain, and and uh, uh, God sent fire serpents among them, and those fire serpents began to bite them, and they began to burn like fire, and they began to die and became sickly, and they started crying to Moses, and he said, Nicodemus, you remember what Moses said? Yes, sir. Moses said, then uh, uh, God said, Moses, you take a, a serpent, and you place that serpent on a pole, and you lift that pole up, and you tell all those people, they'll take a look at that and believe what you tell them, they can be healed. That's what Moses did. And everyone that believed Moses and beheld that serpent, they were healed immediately. Those that didn't, they went on died by the snake bite. Just like a lot of sinners, you've been snake bitten by the devil and you'll die and go to hell if you don't look at Jesus and what he did for you on Calvary. Then he goes on down. He said, now, 
He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so much son of man be lifted up. Must the son of man be lifted up? Who was the son of man? That was Jesus. That was him talking, Nicodemus. He said um, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Then he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now Jesus is telling Nicodemus that. Nicodemus couldn't understand. He explained it to him. Now that's the way you're born again. Now Nicodemus knew that Old Testament story about the serpent in the wilderness. His mother told it, read it to him many times, his father maybe. And Jesus said, now just like those people in the wilderness, the great church that Moses led, the a great group of people through that wilderness there, the called out ones that God called out of Egypt. Then he said, uh, as they looked and beheld that serpent, then he said, I must be made a curse. That serpent of uh, brass is in the form of a serpent, which is in the form of a curse, and I must be made a curse and hang on a cross myself. And so Jesus then was nailed to a cross. Later on, of course, after he told the story here, and he was nailed to a cross and he was lifted up on that cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And said so Nicodemus, that's the way it is. Now Nicodemus had to believe that in order to be born again. There's no way under heaven that you can be born again unless you believe in what Jesus accomplished on that cross, believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Son of God, receiving Him by faith into your heart. The Bible said, if we confess my, our mouth to the Lord Jesus and have believed in our heart that God's raised Him from the dead, we should be saved. Now, Nicodemus, if you uh, want to go to heaven, you've been bragging around here about your background and you're a member of the Sanhedrin court and you're a leader of Israel here and you're a Pharisee, but... Nicodemus, if you want to go to heaven, you got to come down off your high horse. And you got to believe the simple gospel, Nicodemus. You got to believe that Jesus died for you, is buried and rose again. And accept that you say, you got to believe that, that Jesus is doing that, is going to do that. All right, so he began then to tell Nicodemus how he could be born again. And then later on, we find Nicodemus quite active. I'm going to show you three things he did that kind of convinces me that he accepted that message by Jesus and that he was truly born again. Number one, he came to Jesus. John chapter 3 and verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night as midnight when he came over. It is dark part of the night and he came. There you have the midnight in his life anyway. He came to Jesus. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 it said, Come unto me, all your labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He came to Jesus. In John chapter 6 and verse 37, All the Father give me shall come unto me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. He came to Jesus, and he came like a little child. Thou saith that old gray-headed man with his degrees, sitting there like a little child, and listening to the Son of God. And then we see the midnight of his life there. And then we see later the twilight of his life. The Bible said he confessed Christ with his mouth. If thou shalt believe in thine heart and confess with thy mouth. He believed, now he confesses. He stands for one the rulers had condemned. The rulers had condemned Jesus, but he stands for him. In John chapter 7, verses 50 and 51, Nicodemus said unto him, He that come to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our Lord judge any man before we hear him and know what he doeth. And now he's, he's confessing something about Jesus here. Romans chapter 10 and verse 10, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Number three, the third step, we find daylight. We saw midnight when he came to Jesus. We see twilight whenever he's confessing. Now we see daylight. He had a faith that works. In John chapter 19, verse 39, Then came also Nicodemus, which at first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of mirth and all those about a hundred pound weight. Here's a man busy and active now trying to do something for the Son of God. In James chapter 2 and verse 26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. We find a man here moving around, trying to do something. 
I believe he got some. I believe, I believe God birthed him into his family. I believe Nicodemus is born again. And if he was born into God's family, that don't happen one time. Now you listen to me. You're only born into the family of God one time. When you're born in the family of God, you're God's child as long as you live. Oh, you say, preacher, suppose I go out here and, and get drunk and cuss and beat up my family as a child of, well, you do something like that if you're a child of God and God will ta take care of you. When God gets through chastising you, you'll be so sorry about that until you just, uh, you, you weep and beg God for forgiveness. When you become a child of God by birth, when God births you into his family, you only have one birth. You're birthed in there forever. You're in the family of God forever. Now you have people out here that believe you're saved by works. You got to keep yourself saved. You got to do something to get saved. Like a man riding a bicycle, you got to keep pedaling. You're going to fall off. Now they believe in salvation by works. But the Bible says salvation by grace through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And so we're saved by the grace of God, and we're kept by the power of God. And you're only saved one time. Oh, you say, now, preacher, I know a man one time got saved, and he backslid and went out, fouled his life up, and then he come back and got saved. You know, he didn't. If he is saved the first time, when he came back the second time, he's still saved. He just had to come back, get straightened out. And that's what a Christian has to do. Whenever he does something wrong, he shouldn't do anything wrong. But if he does, God gets a hold of him. He has to come back to God and ask God to forgive him. And God straightens him, helps him, and cleans him up if he means business. And uh, God will chasten him if he don't. And then if he continues on through the chastening and don't do right, God may just move him off the racetrack, carry him on to heaven without a reward. And so he won't be a stumbling block to others. You're only born in your immediate family one time. You're only born into God's family one time. The Bible knows only two births, physical and spiritual. And you're born one time physical and one time spiritual. If you have never been born in the family of God, if I had time, I could tell you about people in my tent meetings thought they were born again and heard me preach on the new birth, come in weeping, begging me, asking me to lead them to God. They thought they was born again, but they're just church members. You need to check up and find out whether or not you've been born again. If you don't, if you die without it, you're going to hell. If you die without being born again, you're going to hell. This is certain, as you listen to my voice, that I don't care what you belong to. How good you are, how popular you may be, you're going to hell if you die without being born again. People don't like to hear that, but it's the truth anyhow. Let's stand our feet. Father in heaven, I pray that like this man that came by night, may some today, even in the radio listening audience, come to Christ because of darkness in their lives. Is anybody here in this auditorium that's never truly been born again? May they not rest till they know they're born again. Lord, this is too serious for people to go on and thinking maybe they're saved and die and go to hell. God, you touch them our election call and sure. And may thy people do that today. And for some that's been deceived, may they be straightened out. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.